Now, my whole mobile workshop project would have never taken off uh, but for the kind participation of Coldeen Casters. Uh, and when I started the design for this one, I contacted them and they very kindly sent me some of their latest uh, casters. And these are designed uh, as flight box casters. Now, uh, if you've ever seen those uh, sort of boxes that get moved around at uh, pop concerts, uh, all shiny and silvery, these are the sort of casters that you'd find on them. They're a little bit more substantial in the locking mechanism here, uh, they're slightly broader here, and they're actually about two millimeters higher uh, than these original ones which I've used on the mobile bench and also on the uh, Carvex uh, bench here. Uh, and uh, they look very, very similar, the same uh, rubber tyre, uh, but there's that slight height difference. And as always when I get casters, I put all four together and then get a rule and see just how high uh, they are. These are 132 millimetres, and I took that into account in my design. And if you look closely, this is the new one, the flight uh, caster, uh, and this is the old one that I've been using uh, before. If you notice that blue uh, piece near the top here, it's thicker on the flight one. Uh, if you now look uh, from this direction, if you now look this way, you can see that the, uh, the flight box one, which is this one, uh, is broader. And uh, I think this is a, a little bit more substantial. Now I'm putting these on in exactly the same way that I've done with all my other casters. I'm marking where the centres of each of these holes, then I'm going to drill a pilot hole uh, for the screws I'm using. Now I've run out of the round head posi drives that I usually use uh, and my local stockist has got no more left so I'm using some uh, large brass screws and they've got slotted heads. I'm not a great fan of slotted heads but there we go. So I've just drilled those pilot holes. Right that's excellent, super, I'm really pleased with that. That's it, all done. Now these storage bins are made in virtually the same way, uh, slightly different materials, uh, but uh, they're the same concept. Uh, there's a piece of veneered MDF at the front here. Uh, it's got edging all the way around. And there are side pieces made of plywood and the back is made of plywood. Now my plywood at the back is pretty thin uh, and I'm using magnets to hold it in place when it's shut and uh, in order to mount the magnets on uh, this rear piece I've had to thicken it in the central area uh, so that uh, the magnets can fit down into a hole in the plywood. Underneath here and here I have a spring and that spring goes through the frame into the bottom of the bin uh, which stops the bin from moving and I was rather pleased with that, as you'll see when you see the bit of video. <laughs> uh, the top one is very slightly different, it's slightly different material. It's a question of what materials I had available. Um, I don't know if you're able to just see here, uh, there's a little piece of aluminium angle there which is fixed to the frame at the top. Uh, there's a similar piece here as well. And then on the back of each bin in the centre is a little tiny uh, peg of brass, it happens in my case, uh, which then strikes that and stops this from opening all the way. If you want to take a bin out, you have to move that brass peg out of the way. Uh, that allows it to open uh, beyond that point and then you just lift it off the springs. And there we go, I was following that line. I'd set the fence to five millimeters. Absolutely perfect. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. Now I've just done uh, the, the finished part of that rebate for this side piece for the uh, pullback uh, flap drawer things, whatever they should be called. Uh, and uh, I did the same technique uh, for the upper uh, one as well. Uh, the bottom rebates were done uh, using the Capex saw. 
and they're there. Now, it just so happens that the wood I had uh, for these pieces is different. It, I'm just using up workshop scrap. So this is a piece of 18 mil, uh, and this is a piece of um, 15 mil uh, ply. And so I'm just using up odds and ends. Now I need to cut out some thin strips, the, about uh, 10 millimetres wide and about 2 millimetres thick uh, to go around the edges of the fronts of these uh, pull down, draw flappy things, whatever I'm calling them. And uh, I thought, well, I'd try a quick way of doing it. Uh, and so I very quickly put some uh, rebates in, uh, in this piece of wood. Um, and these are just over 10 millimetres uh, across here. Uh, and I'm going to run it through the bandsaw and see what happens. Uh, I've got this set for a very thin cut. There we are. A whole bunch of very neat little pieces. Perfect. Well, this top storage bin is now uh, just about done um, and I've stuck those thin strips uh, around the edge of this veneered MDF front panel um, and everything else is just uh, glued and uh, these panels are screwed. Uh, I've not uh, done anything fancy to keep the, the front face uh, onto uh, the side pieces. Um, I thought about uh, putting some brass screws in, you know, one at the top on each side and one at the bottom on each side. Um, I'm going to take the risk that the glue will do the job. We'll see how it goes. I can always put those screws in at a later time. Anyway, I'm quite pleased with that. Fits nicely and once it's got a bit of Osmo on, it'll look absolutely brilliant. So I'm now going to do the bottom one. This bottom storage bin is made in a similar uh, manner to the top one, except I don't have the luxury of the lip. Um, now, at the stage I've got it now, I've put on the edging strips on both sides and they're, uh, they need to be planed down so they're flush uh, with the sides. Um, so that's about to happen. Uh, and then I will have to uh, then uh, put the uh, edging strip on, on the top here. Uh, but before I do that, I'll need to then offer it in, in place so that I can make sure uh, that I don't need to just do a slight trim of the veneered MDF before that. Now, when I started constructing this, I wasn't quite sure how these bin mechanisms were going to work. I, I've managed uh, with the magnets to get them to stay shut, uh, but when they uh, open, I want to keep the bottom more or less where it should be. Now I can't put a hinge here because the dynamics are wrong. The hinge would either show or be in the way of um, uh, the movement of, of the bin as I want it. And so uh, I've come up with an idea and you may just be able to see it here. Um, I've got some springs and um, I've for the top one I've already done this. Uh, I've drilled a hole into uh, the base on which the bin sits also into the base of the bin. Uh, the springs are held in here uh, quite firmly uh, and this goes into the hole in the base of the bin. And as the bin moves forward, so the spring bends, but it keeps the bin itself uh, in uh, the, the right position relative to the frame. So I'm just going to do that for this one. Now I've marked where I want my uh, spring holes to go. Uh, these springs are just under six millimeters in diameter and they're very stiff. Um, now I'm going to go up through the frame here into the bin itself and then because I don't want any chance of the spring dropping downwards into the frame uh, after I've drilled the hole I'm just going to put a short plug of 6mm dowel in the bottom of the hole. And there you can see the, the holes which go into the base of the uh, bin itself, one there and, and one there.
And now comes the test. I'm going to put these springs in here and here. And then it's going to be a little bit of a fiddle, I know, to get this onto them. That's it. So that's now on, and as you can see, I can pull this out as far as I like, but the bottom is staying uh, where it should, should stay. So that's pretty, pretty nifty neato, I think. And there we go, top one's back in place, and the bottom one's there as well. So I'm really pleased with those, they work really well. Excellent. Now, in order to fix the bandsaw down, there are four 8mm uh, bolts. Uh, mine are going to come up through uh, the bottom of the base unit uh, and then with the uh, nuts on the top here. Now, this is a real good time to have one of these, uh, an angle drill attachment, because it means you can get into a confined space like this with the machine in situ and drill all the way through. Just like that. Very easy to do. It's very easy then to put your bolt up through. I've cut my bolts off so that they're uh, just the right length. Uh, I'm putting captive uh, nuts on here. Um, they don't supply the captive nuts. I just like to have those nuts with a plastic insert. Uh, they're just a little bit better. Well, that's that. Now all I've got to do is the drawers and then it's finished.